for her country, Japan. So the ladies are done. Japan taking gold, Korea the silver, China the bronze medal. Now make way for the men. It's time for the men's team competition. The bronze medal match, first of all, it'll be France against the United States. And first out of the tunnel, the team from France, second seed after the ranking rounds. France this week defeating Australia five to three in the one eighth round. Then won a tiebreaker from the Netherlands in the one quarter or the quarterfinals and lost to China five to three in the semis. Strong, strong lineup for the French team out here today. And you'll meet the three in just a moment. From left to right, Jean-Charles Valadon. In the middle, Luca Daniel. And on the right, Pierre Lyon. Jean-Charles, of course, a very experienced shooter here in uh, the World Archery Federation, shooting at targets, also very experienced in field archery. And Pierre Plion, a silver medalist last year in Shanghai. They'll take on a USA team that's anchored by Brady Ellison and has two relative newcomers to it. The USA beating Germany this week, 5-3 to three in the 1-8th round defeating Spain 5 to 3 in the quarterfinals before losing by the same 5 to 3 score to the Korean side. Brady Ellison in the middle on his left, Zach Garrett, a newcomer 20 years old and on your right, the tall young man Colin Klemitchek, 19 years old. So Klemitchek, Ellison and Garrett facing Leon, Valadon and Daniel. USA on target number one, and France will be on target number two. This is another match you can look forward to. United States lost to Korea in the semifinal, in the semifinal, in a really high-level match. They, it was Olympic gold level, and France is always a strong team. So definitely, this is going to be exciting. Strong shooters up and down the lineup for France. Brady Ellison, of course, one of the top recurve archers in the world over the last decade or so, but he's got two newcomers working with him today. Here's Luca Daniel, 20 years old, ranked 42nd in the world, leading off for France. And shooting from the left side. <laughs> Right on target. That should boost his confidence. Now Pierre Plion, who is ranked fifth in the world. Very shaky, but in the yellow. Now Jean Charles, a 26-year-old, a former field archery champion, ranked 12th in the world. Deliberately draws it back, ouais. lets it fly. There's a 10. So the gauntlet has been tossed down towards the American team. And Brady Ellison, one of the best in the business, will actually shoot leadoff. Now we'll get our first look at the 19-year-old Colin Klemichek. And now the 20-year-old Zach Garrett. Just a little bit low. So the USA facing an uphill battle here in the first set as we go back to France and Luca Daniel. Daniel ranked 42nd in the world and scoring well. We've seen him a few times before. He competed well in Poland last year in Wrocław at stage four, finished sixth in the individual competition and fifth in the men's team event. And look at the left arm of Pierre Plion, but he's still able to pull it into the nine ring. That's what matters. And Pierre Plion was kind of a surprise last year in Shanghai. Yeah, I think it was his first World Cup appearance. It was. And he was silver, silver medalist and individual. 
rock solid Jean-Charles Valadon. So there is no chance right now for the U.S. to catch France. France will take this first set as they put up 56 points. Even with three straight tens, the U.S. will come up one point short. That's right. Or they, would. They should just use these shots to relax a little bit just to get the feel of the field and come strong for the second set. And the beauty of the set system is all is not lost if you drop this early set. Yes, even if they shoot a miss, they, they, they're still in the game. And it's interesting to see that they've just changed the order of the team. Now Brady's shooting last. So an executive decision was made, apparently. Yes, <laughs> <And>, uh, yes. <laughs> Zach Garrett uh, is, is very young. It's his first time shooting for the United States. Probably he felt too much pressure. Or he was just nervous finishing the, uh, finishing the set. But uh, it's curious that in the team's eliminations, Zach Garrett was shooting really strong. Like um, when, when he needed a finish with the 10, he was going there and doing it. Uh, but well, we're talking about finals. This is a completely different uh, environment and everything. So we can expect uh, people's reactions to change. The American side trying to get more comfortable and settle in right here. France coming out, shooting very well. Valadon, Lyon, and Daniel posting a nice score to take the two set points and grab the lead. But once again, if the United States can come back, take this next set, we're all even at two apiece, and it's anybody's match. Yes, and France is a team you should always consider. Uh, I think they have won uh, silver medals at the World Championships as a team like many, many times over the years. They're a very traditional team. And uh, just a curiosity, um, the, fr the, Fran the French Archery Federation, they have the biggest number of, of um, registered athletes. I think they have over 70,000. So if you have that big amount of athletes, it's, it's easy to pick up the, the talents. Got to imagine there's uh, quite a growing number of archers in Brazil as well. Yes, yeah, we do. N not as much as 70,000, but you know, someday we'll get there. I think the Olympic Games next year may help. There's a liner by Brady. It looks like a nine from here. And Brady started again. So an interesting strategy by the USA. Colin Klimichek, who will face Brady Ellison in the bronze medal match this afternoon. Yes, Klimichek shot very well in the individual eliminations. It was a very good campaign done by him. So now they need a good shot from Zach Garrett. The 10 would be lovely. And there it is. He does it, yeah. Just what the doctor ordered for the Americans. This is very important for them to feel more confident and to, to really get into the match. Coaches with iPads in the box. How about that? They have to keep track of everything. It's a new world, isn't it? Yes. Steve Jobs had no idea. <laughs> The French have an idea of where that yellow ring is. There's a nine for Luca Daniel. But the USA putting up a fight. And there's that shaky left arm again by Pleon. That time, it does not pay off. He was not so lucky, yeah. No. That left bow arm has not been still for Pierre. He's one of the nicest people you could ever meet. Just a wonderful guy. Never got the chance to meet him personally. Jean Charles in the eight ring. So now the USA. Yeah, France opened the door. With the advantage, yes. So now the USA switches up again with the lineup and Colin Klimitschek. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to understand that. They, they've got a, a, an order for the, the first half, an order for the second half. They want Brady leading off. And they want him to anchor it and bring it home. <laughs> yeah. Colin with a nine. nine. Now here is Zach with a nine. And Brady Ellison trying to bring it home and pick up this set. Oh, if Brady shoots a nine, all friends can do is just tie. Ten would put it out of reach. The Olympian, Brady Ellison. Nine makes it possible for France. Makes it possible, yeah. Now France has to shoot all tens. And that's quite a challenge. 
not out of the realm of possibility here on this absolutely gorgeous bluebird day in Antalya, Turkey. Not a cloud in the sky, light breezes. Perfect conditions for high scoring. And there's a high score right there for Luca Daniel. That's a good start. Can they string two more together? If so, they'll split the set. And that's it. The United States clinches the set. So this will be just an opportunity for Jean Charles to perhaps experiment a little bit. Yeah, the, the French archers, they, they usually have some, um, I, I don't really know how to say, some exotic or some different techniques. They Such as? Uh, like Jean Charles Valadon, he, he draws the arrow really low. He brings it really below his chin and then brings it up. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of French archers do some different things, mm -hmm. but it works for them. And uh, this is something really interesting. They they allow their archers to have a very good, um, a, a very strong individuality in their technique. Uh, in the other hand, when you see the American archers, they all shoot like their Kisikli line of technique. Well, both are mm -hmm. working very well. Both teams are shooting strong now. And both teams are here in this bronze medal match. Yes, yes. As is Bernardo from Brazil, I'm Carl Arkey, and wherever you are in this wide, wide world of ours, whatever time of day it may be, morning, afternoon, nighttime, we're glad that you're logging on and watching our Tree TV, our live coverage from Coney Alti Beach, a tradition here on the Archery World Cup Tour. Definitely, and what you mentioned about the iPad, the French coach, he has um, like just regular notebook or, or something. But uh, what is interesting about this is that, <coughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, coaches, they keep track of statistics. They write every single shot their, their archers do so that they can use that in training. Mm -hmm. like they, they try to keep track of uh, as much data as possible. In a sport of precision like this, every detail, every fact, every bit of information that can be used to improve the performance of an archer and a team will be employed. And Luca Daniel employs all that he has at his disposal to score a nine on that first shot. We're tied at two set points apiece. Anybody's match still here in the men's bronze medal match in Antalya, Turkey, stage two. These two teams battling for World Cup points. The winner wins the bronze medal and picks up 10 World Cup points. And there you see that low draw by Jean Charles that Bernardo mentioned just a moment ago, but almost there. Almost there, almost got it into that 10 ring. It is fun about Valadon. I went to look up his file at the World Archery website. And then when you look his his history, like his biography, it's just uh, you can scroll miles down. <laughs> He's a, really experienced. It's a long resume. <laughs> just imagine how long Brady's is. Yes, Bra Brady, it might be even longer. You look at Brady Ellison, you look at Rio Wild, people like that. Yeah, yeah, they're the stars of the sport. And a quick shot right there pays off with 10 points for Klimitschek. Colin Klimitschek setting the table right now for Zach Garrett. We shall find out. Zach veers off to the six ring. So that eight and that six, putting France in very good position right now. Yes, definitely. Brady was giving some feedback to Zach. Him and, um, and Colin Klimichak are two of the United Solid. States rising talents. France gives back a little bit with that eight. Yeah, he didn't look very comfortable with that shot. His arm was too stiff when he released. And Pierre, look at that elbow shaking. And it's way outside in the seven ring. And so now France inviting the USA almost back into this set. Yes, they're, they're leaving the door open. Low and slow. 
Brings it back, solid. Didn't look happy though, as soon as he released, you could see the grimace. Yeah, so I think most of the French archers, they, they I don't know, they struggled with the wind or something in this, uh, in this end. Something changed in this set. Now Klimitschek with a chance for the USA to come back, at least tie this thing. And they still have a chance, but they were hoping for more than eight. Now Brady Ellison surveys the situation, well aware of what's going on. Zach Garrett at the line. Zach zeroes in. And he did it. Zach Garrett with his second 10 here in this third set. So he's starting to rise to the occasion. Brady Ellison needing nine to take the set. Got a 10. X marks the spot for Brady Ellison, and the USA forges ahead. Brady just did what he does best, shoot tennis. And it's really interesting to see this that, that uh, Coach Kissick Lee did to have Allison starting the set and then finishing it. Uh, uh, it's the first time I see something like this, and it seems to be working really well. The method to the madness. Yes, he, he is. <laughs> Kissick Lee, he's one of the best coaches in the world, so uh, we, we can expect the best from everything he does. And has produced great results with the American recurve team as the crowd anxiously looking on here at Antalya, Turkey, where France got off to a 2-0 lead after the first set. The United States came back, tied it up at 2-all in the second set. And now after three sets, it's the USA poised to win the bronze medal. If they can split this set, if they can take the set, it's theirs as well. France needing, desperately needing to win. They can't afford to split. Yeah, they, they, all they have to do now is just shooting tens. They have to really focus and put it all, all they've got right now. So the pressure is on Pierre Pléon, Jean-Charles Valadon, and Luca Daniel. And they will shoot first as they now trail 4-2 in this match. Third match out of four this morning in the morning session here on Recurve Sunday in Antalya. Luca Daniel won a junior team gold medal at the 2014 World Indoor Championships in Nîmes back in 2014. So he has tasted success and victory before, and that's a sweet taste right there. He's showing why he has tasted success. Great low angle shot of Pierre Plion. Our crew from Hit the Roof giving you all the angles, all the coverage. Another 10, Pierre Plion, who was an event organizer back in 2014 for the Indoor World Championship in Neiman, as you mentioned, Bernardo. Shanghai was the first time he'd ever entered and competed in a tournament, and he got to the gold medal match and won a silver. And that's what took him to Lausanne. And that will take France a long way right there. Three straight tens. Jean-Charles Valadon, who captured a bronze medal last summer in Wrocław as he beat your teammate, Marcus Dalmeda. Yes, yes, that was a good match. And France is showing that they're still alive in the match. Not the start the USA was hoping for. Yeah, not, not the kind of shot you expect from Brady. He barely misses the, the yellow. Klimicek with a strong shot. He looked very confident. That, that was a beautiful shot. This will serve him well being out here this morning. Come this afternoon when he's in that bronze medal match against Brady Ellison. Yes, I'm sure he's already breaking the ice and he's getting really more comfortable for his afternoon match. On the line? Looks like it is. I think it's in. If it is, it's still anybody's set. But the Frenchman putting up a fight. Three straight tens to start off this set. Daniel dials up another dime. Very impressive, very impressive. Look at Daniel, ranked 42nd in the world. Now Pierre Plion. Finished sixth at the World Cup Finals in Lausanne, and he's just outside that 10 ring. Oh, yeah, just out. But a strong, solid shot. And a 10 right here would put it out of reach in this set. Jean-Charles Valadon. 
And Balladon comes through with a nine. That leaves the possibility out there for a possible tie in the set, a split of the set points, and that one point would give the match to the United States. But you can forget about that. Yeah, we're gonna have a shoot off. France is going to take this set, regardless of these final two shots by Zach Garrett, followed by Brady Ellison. So Zach continues to shoot very strong. In fact, he's gotten better as the match has gone on. Yes, yes. Zach didn't, uh, unfortunately, he didn't shoot very well in the individual, but in the team, he really showed what he's up to. There we go. So the USA fi finishes with two tens. Had that nine been a 10, it'd be over. But now we're tied at four apiece. And the French showing how competitive they are, not giving up after falling behind four to two after that third set. They come back. Those three straight tens really set the tone for that fourth set. Yes, yes. They really put the pressure on the United States and they got what they wanted. They're going for the shoot off. They're still alive in the match and now anything can happen. There's a good look at Steve Anderson, the six foot seven compound archer from the United States who picked up a medal yesterday, a gold medal as he teamed up with uh, Brady Ellison. Oh, excuse me, not Brady Ellison, Rio Wild. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say, and Bridger Deaton. And uh, they were able to come from behind yesterday and win a gold medal. Now, can the U.S. men in recurve win a bronze medal here today against France? Now, three weeks ago in Shanghai, it was Indonesia in a shoot-off. We had a shoot-off three weeks ago in the bronze medal match, and Indonesia won it, defeating Spain. Indonesia was a surprise uh, at Shanghai. They they got two bronze medals. That was very impressive. It's a shame they couldn't come to Antalya. So the heartbeats are beating a little bit faster. Each archer to shoot one more arrow. The team with the top total score. Comes away with the medal. Luca Danielle has been consistent all day long and remains consistent. What a good shot. He has been so strong in that leadoff spot for France. Colin Klimichek. Off to the left with an eight. Not really what he wanted, but it, it, it doesn't get all the chances out. Advantage France. Pierre Plion. Wobbly left elbow. And it ends up in the red ring. It is a game of controlling your nerves. Very steady. Zach Garrett. He's been right on target most of the day, just a little bit outside the 10 ring. So France with a one point lead. They shoot a 10 right here. Then it's gonna get complicated for the Americans. Valadon does it. Yeah, and that's it, France gets the bronze. Valadon does. And Brady Ellison will take this last shot, but it's a mere formality. It's out of reach for the United States. And the uh, tiebreak will go to France by two points, 28-26. France coming from behind after falling behind four to two in that third set. They come back, won the fourth set, forced a tiebreaker, and then they win it with very solid and consistent shooting. Yeah, France really benefited from that momentum in the last set. They shot so strong in the last set, so they, they came to the shoot-off really confident, knowing that they were right there in the middle, and they got it. Thumbs up. <laughs> it was thumbs up a minute ago. It is cool, it's cool to notice that all the French archers, they're using these um, special sunglasses, let's say like this, 
these. Uh, uh, this is something quite new in the in the world scenario. Just the last couple of years. Yes, yes. They and, and it was kind of a fashion thing. Like uh, everybody started using them. And uh, what is interesting about them is that they they increase contrast. So you can see, you can see the colors more vividly, and you can see the the difference between the colors. So they. So see there is a.